Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of the Born to Root version 2. And we've landed on Tim's blog using directory enumeration. And today we're going to build a custom word list in order to attempt authentication on the logging page. Let's get started. So since we have a bunch of data points here about the user, there are many tools that allow you to build custom word lists. Uh, we've saw cool in previous uh, episodes or previous videos, make sure to check the play playlist penetration testing. It has a load of other challenges that you can learn from. Uh, basically, cool is uh, a tool that allows you to extract words from a web page. Um, today, though, we are going to use another tool since this we have a bunch of data about this user. Um, there's a tool called cup. So cup is basically the common user passwords profiler. Uh, the way to install it is just sudo apt install cup and you're good to go. What I like to do when using cup is using the interactive mode. So I'm going to hit enter and I get a interactive prompt. What is the first name of the user you want to build a word list for? Well, it's Tim. Surname. I uh, don't think we have a surname here. Uh, so we are just going to hit enter. What is the nickname? Again, I don't see any nickname here. Let me just put this aside so that we can see the different data points we have here. Uh, basically, most of the time when I am lazy with capital L, I don't know. Maybe this is a nickname, so let's put it here. What is the birth, the birth date? Okay. In order to get the birth date, we can subtract 32 from the date of when this challenge was published. So let's go real quick to Von Hub. Born to root V2. And it seems that it was uh, updated or uh, released on 28th of February 2019. So 28th of February, uh, are there any partner? Nope, I don't think so. But since there are many or hobbies for Tim, I'm going to put them uh, right here. Just to tell you that we can put whatever we want. It's uh, just a way to combine those words into a word list. So the more the words are, the better the chances of cracking or finding the right password. Nickname, again, I can do football. And for the birth date, we don't have any, but we can like do 1-1-1987. Child's name, we don't know, but we know an interest that is music. Child's nickname, um, well, he came from Brisbane, so we can put that there. And we don't have the birth date. Uh, what about the pet's name? Pet's name, let's say USA, because he's living in the US. Company name, maybe a website, because that's uh, Tim's blog. Uh, we, we can do Tim blog or just blog. Do you want to add other keywords? Um, yes, why not? By default, it's added. So do you want to add special characters at the end? Yes. Random numbers, yes. Lead mode, yes. And so uh, we have about 5,000 items in our word list. It's called tim.txt. And so this is the different passwords that we were going to try. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's uh, fire up burp and see how we can brute force. All right, let's try with the dummy username and password. Try to log in, capture the request. Here it is, our post request with the dummy username and password. Let's send it to the repeater. Uh, actually, I want to send it to the intruder. And I'm going to clear everything and target just the username and the password. In the attack type, I'm going to use cluster bomb. And in payloads, I'm going to put here in the first word list, admin and Tim. And for the password, that's the second payload set, I'm going to paste in the content of my word list. So let's take that and paste it right here. I'm going to just URL, don't URL encode these characters. 
and I'm going to start the attack. All right, we have a bunch of 303. Let's just verify in one of the requests that we indeed use the username Tim and the password in the right place. Everything looks good. Now everything here seems to be returning 303. Maybe there are, there's a different response, I'm not sure. If we sort by length, oh, we see a different length here. All right. Admin with the password travel. What do we have in the response? Ooh, set cookie Joomla user logged in. All right, it seems that this is the right combination. So let's try that out here. Admin and travel, log in. And yes, indeed we log in. Hi, super user, cool. Tim, it's always a good idea to use strong passwords. So what can we do here? Now with any CMS comes a back office. So we can go to the site administrator to see what we can achieve with admin travel, hoping that it's the same user. And yes, it is. We have a bunch of ways we can uh, compromise this. Obviously the objective here is to get remote code execution. Let's go to content and let's go to the list of articles. We have the getting started. Yeah, why don't we edit that? Just like WordPress, we can edit the content of any page. Um, if I toggle the editor here, I see the HTML code. So what I can do here is inject PHP. This, I guess, wouldn't work. PHP info. Generally, you wouldn't use PHP info. You need to be more subtle. But here, I'm just trying to see if I can save that as it is. And if I now toggle the editor. Oh, yeah. So it's adding comments here. So basically sanitizing my input, uh, escaping it. So it's not going to work. Click and save and close. Let's go still to contents and maybe we can upload a web shell in here. Let's choose a file. I'm just going to create a file called um, that has PHP info. So that's our web shell.php. And let's start upload. And it seems that our file is not uploaded here. Hmm. If this doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. Joomla is full of features and one of them is extensions. So think of these as additional functionality that you can expand your CMS with. So if I go to manage, I can see here that I can install one. So if we click on that, I can choose a extension to install and I don't have one. So I'm just going to look on the internet for one. And because we are hackers, I'm going to look for Joomla remote code execution extension. So this Joomla web shell plugin seems promising. Let's click on it. So Generally, we just have to upload the plugin and then it, the shell will be available under modules, mod web shell, mod web shell .php, with action, exec, and command, whatever command you want to issue. That's really promising. We can even interact with it using console.py, which comes included with the repository. Cool. Um, this is really promising, so I'm just going to git clone that project. I've already done that, so if you go to Hacking Tools, Joomla, I have the folder plugin. Inside plugin, you will zip this and create the file RCE. So the way to do that is zip-r for recursive, and I'm going to name it rce2.zip just to show you, and then just use the star. Now it's going to also zip rce.zip, but yeah, we just want to test that Indeed, we have rc2.zip. For now, I'm going to remove it and let's upload that bad guy. Choose file and upload. Cool, message installation of the module has been successful. If I go to manage, just to make sure that the web shell has indeed been uploaded, I'm going to look for it, web shell. And indeed, it's checked. 
perfect. Now let's use the console. So dash H would give me the help. So dash T for target, HTTP, CTF 18 and hit enter. Now I get a prompt. If I type ID, mm, I get nothing. Hmm, what's wrong? Now, if you look closer here, we have the website or the Joomla blog under the path Joomla. So we need to append this to our path. All right, drum rolls. If we type ID, oh, we get results back. We've gained remote code execution using an extension on Joomla. Let me know if you can find any other way to achieve remote code execution on Joomla. Post a comment below and let me know. So with that said, we're going to attempt privilege escalation. And this is what we're going to do in the next video. If you've learned something new from this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.